It's already recording. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cannonello, you didn't get directed anything. Oh, sorry. Did you? Oh, whoops. Um, you one said second. Three and you only get two people still. Bragdon, you want Terrence? All right. I, go this time I would give you this cool uh, clay corgi that Chloe made, eighth grader. But it's like she made it, so I don't want to risk that. Um, in the side. You. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 What's that, Angie? Yeah. Oh, you got most of it? Yeah, okay, sorry. I'm kind of like moving a little quick now. Uh, that was nice. Maybe you got good. good job. Good job. You're going to get... You're going to get... This. Just don't touch it though, because it might have current. No, okay. We used to we used to use that all the time for this thing called word ball, where I would just put words up on the board. We probably still could, but it kind of seems like not a great idea nowadays, because like we're throwing we were throwing the ball like like everyone was like touching the ball, and like I don't know, if we just like used hand sanitizer before that. I'm sure that'd be fine. But. And then use hand sanitizer. Yeah, and I could like use a wet wipe on the ball, I guess. I don't know, or get a new ball and like. Yeah, but that one's kind of falling apart. I'll anyway, ball. yeah, remember, guys, uh, I'm actually switching these days this week. So we're going to check the homework right now. Oh, that's what I was supposed to be doing, too. Okay, I'm a little all over the place. I'm going to check your homework. It's on your table, uh, on your desk, rather. Uh, take as many notes as possible. Because remember, on these translation quizzes, it is just the same exact translation again. Uh, two of them are going to show up uh, on the quiz that you take on Friday. But it's not just a translation. I'll be underlining some words, uh, especially verbs. Obviously, for this chapter, I'll be underlining verbs for sure, asking the tense of the verb. So we have a little guide up here for future tense versus imperfect. So really be taking note of the tense of the verbs, the person in number two, uh, but also the nouns in general. Um, OK, I'm going to come around. If I don't see your homework out, I'm going to assume that means you don't have it. I don't want to hear about it. But you do need to take a bunch of notes as we work through the homework today uh because like again that's your study guide the quiz for you guys will be on friday we'll play, play jeopardy tomorrow um yeah well the jeopardy will help us review even more uh it's going to be like i'm going to put an emphasis on us reviewing while playing jeopardy tomorrow and that like I, jeopardy is always supposed to be reviewed but this one like really is supposed to be reviewed and that i'm going to be uh kind of like um encouraging you to even take notes if you want uh, and there will be like stuff pertaining to the quiz on Friday in the Jeopardy. Uh huh. I got one request. Can computer kids be allowed to pick one other category? Oh. We have our category, then we get one choice from anything else. I'll try to make like a history mythology thing that's very general. So it might not be recent stuff, it might be kind of old mythology stuff. But yeah, maybe I'll make a history or myth thing that anybody can pick. I can figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I'll make, I'll make y'all's list. I've been making y'all's kind of hard. Um, all right, here are the endings. Well, uh, raise your hand if you have most of all of first by now. So I, hopefully I'm seeing most uh, hands at this point. Uh, is anybody like thinking like they still don't have uh, all of first and they're confused as to why most kids do? What was it? I have all first. I just forgot the last two. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're like almost there, but you don't have 100% of it, that's fine. I only forgot the Oh, okay. Yeah, hopefully you have most or all of first, and you have some of second. And then obviously the people who are getting prizes have managed to figure out first and second. But usually most of those people I, I'm, I'm kind of observing are people on their second year of Latin at least. So they're at an advantage for sure. If you're first year, this is not out of reach, but it is going to take you a little longer to feel like fully confident and comfortable having all these endings off the top of your head. So we'll have at least one more chapter where you can use a noun chart on the translation quiz. They're the verb endings. I want you to either do bomba spot, bomba spot, and font for imperfect at this point. Uh, the only weird one there is probably this guy, I guess. That it's an M instead of O. So they all have BA in them. Future isn't weird at all. I wouldn't really say the B in the O one is weird, uh, but this one's kind of weird. The B U N T. Think of they will eat lunch cake someday. Uh, and then soon essay, uh, some people are doing, which is awesome. That's there as well. Okay. 
Who can read number four? I do, thank you. Um, I just need to find out who doesn't have. Uh, Dave, you wanna read this? Good. What did you get, David? Do they have any what? Okay, pretty good, pretty good. So you're having some confusion uh, regarding your subject, which I don't blame you uh, for that. But you're, you're getting a lot of the vocabulary there. Good. Does anybody else want to share the translation of this? Do you think? Yes. Can I have Ty to the office, please? Uh, yeah. Can I bring back some jobs? Yeah, that's what you can. Wait, what? Can't. Yeah. 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 Ye
so that's well, that's what I think, but I don't know for sure. Is that what we're gonna say, Genevieve? Good. Uh, and what is our verb, um, Angie? What's the other thing Chicken Boy tells us to do? I'm sorry. The last one, yeah, hop babe on. Yep. Uh, good. Is that first, second, or third person, Lucia? Uh, third. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 So, if we had no nominative plural, we would actually use they. But it looks like we do have a nominative plural in the form of this adjective. Remember, adjectives are often playing the role of nouns. So, multi there has a nominative plural long i ending. I guess it could be genitive, but like. I can't think of why it would be genitive here. It's not next to a noun that is possessive of or anything. Uh, so I think that is the subject. And we saw this in the last homework assignment that many was a subject. Landon, get something on your desk. Why are you like forcing me to tell you that? That's what I feel like a kid is doing when they are just sitting there with nothing on their desk. They're just like, I'm gonna wait till the teacher tells me to put something on my desk and actually do something. Like why? Like what's the point of like making me go like go through that hoop? Okay, so many, many what? Um, let's see, Landon Smalley, what tense is Habe on? Lucia tells us it's third person plural. We don't need to use they as a subject, but we do have a nominative plural. We're gonna use many. Something about many having something. But what tense is it? Is it future or imperfect? It's imperfect. Good, very good, it's imperfect. So it's gonna be like was or were having. All right, now what case is Pulchra Patria Nostra, Landon Holler? Oh. With those well, macron A's. If it does macron A, it would be. Open it up. This is a study guide. We're building a study guide for your quiz on Friday. Like, there's a real purpose to this, yeah? Ablative, singular, neuter. Yeah, they're ablative. Good. They're the object of what preposition then, uh, Amber? Are they ablative? They're the object of what preposition? Don't overthink it. What preposition are they right next to? No, that not goes with adjective. Uh, Avery? In, right? Yeah, where there's which many in our beautiful fatherland. So be careful with that. This happens a lot where a noun gets sandwiched by not one but two adjectives on either side. The weird thing here is that we have to be, like, as always, we have to be conscious of the word order. Because in English, we can't say many in the beautiful fatherland our. No, you just say our beautiful father. We can't even say beautiful our father. We have to put our first. That's just the way English works. But Nostra means our. So many in our beautiful father. Yeah. So in communicative video, are we going over like the sentence that could be on our quiz? Like, is it no, because remember that still, I'm still going to draw from the homework from last week. So chapter three? Yeah, which I'll probably try to review those at the end of class today. So that'll be at the end of the video tomorrow. So, and you guys will take that on Friday. Yeah, but it's from last week. Uh, okay, so many in our beautiful fatherland. And then magnum otium. What do we do with magnum otium, Kate? In what case are they? Now, otium's neuter. So when I first see it, I think like it could be nominative singular, which wouldn't agree with our plural third person verb. But then we realize most many is our subject. So this can't be the subject. So what can it be? What, what, uh, so neuter um, always has, like neuter second attention, the subject form always overlaps with what other very important accusative, yeah. So it might be the direct object, okay? And is that the only direct object, Avery? Is, is uh, much peace the only direct object? What else? Yeah, we have another accusative. This is first accusative, accusative plural. So this is second accusative, uh, accusative singular. This is first accusative, accusative plural. So we have a compound direct object. Much piece and few pairs. Okay, so let's put it all together. Uh, how do people translate ha baby bonds? Does anyone want to just tell me how they took just the verb? David? Had? Had. Had would be present tense. We already decided it's imperfect. Um, so this one's kind of weird though. Uh, I have taught you guys to translate as we're having, right? So that's fine. That is correct. Many in our beautiful fatherland were having, uh, or used to have, great peace and few cares. They were having great peace. So probably, obviously, 
Oh, um, uh, we're having sounds a little weird. So when imperfect, when was or were having sounds a little weird when you translate an imperfect, you could try like verbed instead. What would verb be for have? We don't say have, but we say, you want to allow? Yeah, just had. So had is actually great. Uh, and then there's this very rare way to translate the imperfect that only like comes up maybe once a semester. But here actually might be a good place for this. I haven't talked about it before. Don't really worry about it, it's not a big deal, but I think it actually kind of works here. And that is used to verb. So if was or were verbing sounds weird, and maybe verbed also sounds weird, which here it doesn't, had sounds fine, like they had a uh, great piece. Uh, you could try used to verb, so used to have, I think is better here. But that's just a little minor thing, don't worry about it, like you really don't even need to really remember that. So anyway, if I pick this one on the quiz, which like I could, I like this one okay, I'm not sure I haven't made the quiz yet, I will in like two hours. Um, I would maybe underline patria and say, what's the case in the function? No, I'd actually just say case. Uh, and you would say ablative. If I didn't say function, you'd say the object of the preposition or object of in. But I probably wouldn't actually pass function for that. If I underline otium or kuros and said case or function, you would say accusative direct object. But the one thing I would definitely underline would be habebon. And you would need to tell me it was third plural imperfect. Those would, uh, if that's what the blanks would be for habebon or for this in, in general. Who can read Numeris Quinque? Landon Hunter. I can indeed. Someone can read number five though while we wait, uh, dinner. Yeah, I have to wait to flip, but if you have it in front of you. You could go now. All right. Good, good. Let me just check to make sure I am in fact recording. Um, I am, okay. See if it actually works this time. Good, who wants to share the translation for this? Anyone? Propter exidium patri poinam avorum tum laudabal. No? Okay, uh, this one's kind of, this one is a little weird. It's like one of the harder ones of this set. It's not too hard. So prop dare takes an accusative object, meaning the, the, the thing that we say, like, the, the, that we put with on account of or because of, that's how we want to translate prop dare. That is going to be accusative, but that overcomplicates it. You really don't need to think of it that way. The accusative is going to be right next to prop dare. So in this case, it is just exidium. Exidium is accusative. It's the object of prop dare. So it's on account of the destruction. And then we see patriae, and this actually kind of happened last week too. If this comma wasn't here, I would think patriae was a subject. If the comma was like here, I would think patriae was a subject. But because it's after patriae, I'm kind of liable to think it's like going with exidium in some way. So what case is patriae, anyone? What do you think, Olivia? What case is patriae? Like it could be nominative plural, but the way the comma is after it, I feel like it's not the subject. It could be dative. I don't know if it'd be dative either. Uh, Matthew? Grayson? Matthew? Grayson. It's Grayson. Sorry. What do you think, Grayson? Genitive. Yeah. What if it's genitive? Okay. Why do I think it's genitive? Um, again, kind of because of the, the comma. Propter is always off in its own world. Propter and its object are always kind of off in their, its own world. But sometimes there's, like, we saw this last week too. Sometimes there might be, like, a genitive or an adjective going with the object of propter. So in this case, it's a genitive going with the object of propter. So once we translate propter, exidium, and patriae, that's the kind of, we put that off to the side, and then we get to the main part of the sentence. This is just what we call a prepositional phrase. So propter, exidium, patriae, what would that translate to? Anyone on account of what? Jenna? Not beautiful. Some Kind of, but you're leaving out exidium. Um, no, Landon? Um, no, this has nothing to do with exit. David? I'm sorry? Say it again. No, this doesn't have to do with arrow errare. I'm not sure where that would be coming from. Avery? Of the country. Yeah, that works. On account of the destruction of the country or the fatherland. Yeah, country works too. Country is a little quicker uh, of a way to translate patria than father. 
So, uh, yeah, um, it's on account of the destruction of the fatherland. Because once you realize this is genitive, uh, it is possessive of exidium, so we would use of. Um, so it would be not just on account of the destruction, but on account of the destruction of the, the fatherland or country. Okay, so that's all just with prop there. We put that off to the side now. Now we mess with the main part of the sentence. Poinam. What case is poinam, uh, Amanda or Jenna? That A.M., what, is, what case does that make you think of? Accusative, because it's what kind of object, Abby and or Jenna, is it direct, indirect, or an object of a prep? Yeah, it's probably direct. So we don't know what to do with it yet. So we have to keep moving. Avororum, what case is Avororum, Abby, or Jenna? That orum ending, O-R. Yeah, so it's something about the punishment of the greedy or something like that. Tomb just means then, and then we get to our verb. Okay, our verb's going to help us out here, because we still don't really even have a subject. Uh, Laudabon, is it first, second, or third person, Genevieve or Aiden? First, second, or third person? Uh, third plural. What's the pronoun we use for a third plural verb? Third. They. So... If we don't have a nominative plural, we're just going to use they. This hasn't happened too much, but that's what happens when you have a third-person verb and you don't have a nominative that agrees with it. Because we don't have a nominative, right? Again, if this comma was after exidium, I would think that patriae was a subject after. Because it is a nominative plural. It could be a nominative plural. But because the comma is like after patriae, I don't then think that it's the subject. It, it's just genitive like we already decided. So yeah, we don't have a nominative plural to be our subject. We're just going to use they, uh, which is kind of weird, but it's not that weird. Um, Aiden and or Priscilla, what tense is Laudaba, future or imperfect? Imperfect, yeah, because the BA. I do have this little guide up here. You see BA in an ending? That's imperfect. That's the usual the word. B-O-B-I-B-U, our future. Okay, so let's put it all together. So we're going to say they were phrasing the direct object of the genitive. They were praising the punishment or the penalty of the greedy then. To means then. You can put then in a lot of places in the sentence. Uh, then is an, at the end is an okay place for it. What's better is probably closer to the verb. Like they were then praising or then they were praising or they were praising then the punishment of the greedy. Um, I'm putting it at the end, which is actually not the best spot for it, but I'm just kind of like uh, illustrate, demonstrating that adverbs can kind of like go in a bunch of places in your translation. It's, it's not very strict with, with adverbs. Um, subjects, direct objects, and verbs, we have to be careful about, of how English uh, is. But adverbs, not so much. Any questions about this one? All right, two down, four to go. Oh, this one's quick. Uh, who can read this one and share their translation? It's okay, we got a bunch of volunteers. Becky, can you read it, please? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Quan, Quando Cannabimus. Uh, what did you get, Brecton? Um, all of my friends, um, no, you're thinking of culpo culpar. Okay, you're close, but you got your verb mixed up, Landon. What did you get? Uh, I got all of my friends. One more week. Sounds perfect, Avery. What did you get? Same thing. So, hello, my friend, or greetings, my friend. Uh, when will we dine? Good. So the first part's easy, right? Salve is technically an imperative, meaning a, co a command. So ancient Romans didn't really hear it like a command. Uh, just like when someone says like, hey, have a good day, you don't think of that as like they're ordering me around. No, you think of it as like that was a greeting. So it's just hello or hi or whatever. We drop the Ari off the infinitive to get that imperative, the command form. And then Amikamea is what case anyone out loud? What? You found it? You sure you didn't just do it in class? Um, uh, what, what case is it again? Someone say it again. Anyone? Not accusative. It's a case, huh? It's a case I always make fun of. I don't even put it down here in the, co uh, the, the color. Yeah, it's actually the vocative. Yeah, that's vocative because they're being addressed. So anytime someone looks like they're being spoken to, it's probably vocative. I mean, these are nominative endings, but in this context where it's coming after a hello, and there's an exclamation mark, it feels like dialogue, that is vocative. And quando is just our new interrogative pronoun that means when, and then que everything is basically packed into que 
Uh, Gabby, is Kenavi most first, second, or third person singular plural? Yeah, singular plural. Oh, plural. Good. So, Hannah, for a first person plural verb, what pronoun do we use? Good. No, no, well, that'd be singular. For plural, it's actually it starts the W. Yeah. So since first person plural has the M in it, I think of like flipping that M upside down and then thinking of like a W for we. So we is our subject. And then Brecton, what tense is it? Because uh, this means to dine. That was one thing. But you also want to miss the tense here. Is this future or imperfect? Good. So we're going to use will. So, yep, we are getting we from the ending here. We're getting will from here. And since it's a question, we actually need to start off with will. We're not going to say we will dine. No, we're just going to be will, when, will, we dine. Uh, so helping verb has to go first. Any questions on this one? I would maybe pick this one if the other one that I picked was kind of longer, uh, so as to kind of give you a break with a smaller one. And the question I would ask on this one is basically just about Ken Abimos. I would underline it and say person, number, and tense. And you'd say first, plural, future. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's – I might pick this one. I'm not sure, but maybe. Genevieve? So, um, Seneca's first person pronoun should be first person pronoun. Yeah, it means to dine. This one. Okay. Yeah. So, look at this, Genevieve. It's weird. Like, verbs have so much information to lack. We get the we, the subject from the must. We get the will from the bi, from the fact that future tense. And then this actually tells us what the verb even is. It's cano canari to die. So yeah, there's like three pieces of information coming from that verb. Um, it's kind of crazy. Any other questions? All right, three down, three to go. Uh, by the way, when we get to number nine, I'll tell you this again, but I don't like number nine that much. So I will not pick number nine for the quiz. I'll pick either four, five, six, seven, or eight, but not nine. Um, okay, seven. Who can read this one in Latin? Me so hungry. Anybody else hungry? Avery, go, go ahead and read this one. Harvest around here, Good. What did you get for this, Avery? And often will praise you. Excellent. Did anybody else want to share? That's basically correct. What's going on over near Jaden? Uh, it's very distracting. So let's see here. Um, Jaden, what do you think the subject of this sentence is? Yeah, it's the first noun. We see it's nominative. Why not? Does it have an adjective buddy, Angie? No? Uh, Lucia, do you think it has an adjective buddy, Magistra? Nostra, this new adjective, Nostra. Maybe you just didn't realize it's an adjective, but it is. It's the most boring adjective of all time, along with Maeus and Tumas, but it means our. So our teacher, that could probably be the subject. Let's confirm, Landon Smalley, what is the verb in this sentence? The verb? Um, yep. Angie? It's loud a bit. Is there another one? Yeah, we have two. It's the same verb, but one is present tense and one is question mark tense. Yeah, so that's just like number uh, five, right? Five was the same way. So... Uh, what person and number are both of them, uh, Angie, Lucia, or Landon? First, second, or third person? Uh, what? Third. They're third, singular, plural? Yeah. They're singular. Landon, what tense is left? So this was just present, third, singular. This is also third, singular, but is it future or imperfect tense? It's future. Good. So we're just changing the tense. Um, but it looks like our teacher might be the subject of both of them. This happens, right? We've seen this before, where one subject actually performs two verbs. So his first verb, uh, we're going to have him, we don't know what to do with May yet, but our teacher praises, uh, well, Chicken Boy's telling us that May and Tay are either accusative or ablative, so maybe it's just accusative here. Maybe it's our teacher praises me. That's the first part. And something about you, something about often, and then, oh, he will praise, because Adabit is future, third singular, you. Or he often will praise you. Um, and will often praise you. So we don't need to repeat our teacher. We can if we wanted to. If we wanted to, we could say our teacher praises me and our teacher will often praise you. Uh, what would be better is probably just, well, it's a she for one thing. So it would be our teacher praises me and probably she will often praise you for the second part. But yeah, you don't need to repeat our teacher, but it is the subject for both of the verbs. Any questions on this one? This one's pretty straightforward. Yes? Uh, 
No, I feel like it's like a kid who's like a kid who gets like really good good grades or something, and they're trying to encourage a kid who like doesn't get good grades, and they're like, oh, like the teacher's always praising me, uh, but they will in the future one day praise you, something like that. I'm not sure though. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they always try to tell like like it's a little fragment of a story. These sentences, some are better than others. This one, who knows what the context is. Um, if I picked this one on the quiz, I would underline my job it, and you would have to tell me it's third singular future. I probably, if I was being kind of mean, I would underline may and tay and ask what the case and or the function, probably just one of those. And you would want to tell me that they're accusative direct objects. The reason that would feel a little mean is because because they're pronouns, you can't actually use your noun chart to figure out that they're direct objects. You would just need to understand that they are accusative direct objects because uh, um, you like, took good notes and paid attention. So that'd be kind of hard, but like, I would, I'm not saying I wouldn't do that. I would maybe do that. But yeah, remember, uh, you can use your noun chart on the quiz. But your noun chart won't help you with pronouns. Anytime you see may and tay, they're either accusative or ablative. We have mostly seen them as accusative direct objects though. All right, two more to go, 10 minutes to go. So five minutes per each of these. Uh, who can read number eight? Uh, let's have 10 of you, thank you. Very good. What did you get for this? While you think about that, remember, I want your transition to be prepared and written out. This is what I was thinking of. So number eight is kind of doing the same exact thing as number seven. It's not, I think I said something like, oh, this is like number five. I was thinking of last class having gone over number eight. Number eight is a lot like number seven in that we have like the same verb twice but initially it's present tense, and then the second version of it is question mark tense. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, you wanna try again, Genevieve, or? Okay. Um, so in upper level Latin class, uh, people stop writing down their translations, like in college, like Latin seminars. People just show up to a seminar with like light notes taken on the Latin translation they were assigned, and they just kind of translate it on the spot. But for your first two or three years of Latin, you, you actually do, you wanna write out your translation. That's what you do. You work up to the point where you can just kind of like read it and be like, oh, it's, um, it's this. This is what the translation is. And your professor's like, oh, good job. But you need to tweak this. No, right now, we still need to write out the translation. So if that means you using a second piece of paper because you don't have too much room on the handout, awesome. Do that, please. Uh, but I do want you to write it out to a point where it feels at least like shareable and like ready to share. Anybody else? No? Okay, what case is... I see multas and colpas is the first two words, and I like already know those go together. Oh, it looks like humanus too. We have another three word noun phrase. Many, something about faults and human. Okay, many human faults. All right, what case though is many human faults, Jaden? Um, it is a Good, Landon and Holler, uh, if they're accusative, what, what's their function as accusative nouns or um, noun phrase? Indirect? indirect? Or direct. Just direct. So we're starting off with a direct object. This happens sometimes. It's not one of the kind of sentences where we start off with a propter phrase or a subject. We still don't know what our subject is. We can't do anything about this direct object until we have a subject and a verb. So I see, hey, habemos next. Okay, well, that's a verb. That's good. Amber, uh, habemos. Is it first, second, or third person? No, that'd be habes or habemos. Okay, yeah, first, singular plural. Good. So the subject is what? We, yeah. So that, okay, now we got our subject and we got our verb at the same time. So it's we have many human faults, right? Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. That should be pretty straightforward for you guys, those first four words. Um, it's many human faults. But we are getting used to this thing where a noun has two adjective buddies in a sandwich between them. And you obviously just need to kind of like reorganize them in English because we can't say many faults human. No, it's many human faults. This is human as in the adjective, like uh, this very human behavior or whatever. So, okay, that's the first part. Uh, we have many human faults and semper habe bemos. Habe bemos is also first plural, but Olivia, what tense is it? Whereas this one's present, this one is... Future. So it's, uh, we have many human faults. And we always will. 
I think this is the best way to translate it. Uh, though it is a little weird. I'm not even repeating have a second time. I'm just saying always will. Because, like, I think the rest is kind of understood. And I don't know how else to do it really at all. Uh, I could say something like, and we always will have, have them. them. I'd have to add them, which, like, there is a word in Latin for them. We just won't get it until, like, chapter 15 or something. It's like a relative pronoun. Uh, hello, friends. So, uh, yeah, I think this is the best way to do it. Did anybody else do anything else? Always will have them is okay. Sometimes it's kind of okay to add something that's not there, like them. Like, or you can even repeat human faults, but that's pretty that's pretty uh, verbose. Like, we, will, we have many human faults and always will have many human faults. That starts to get too, it's too long-winded. Jaden? Before I changed it, I said, um, we have many faults. We have many human faults and we'll always have Always, but did you say always will have? Yeah, always will have. Yeah, that's okay. I just, I wouldn't want to repeat human faults. So I'm choosing to not repeat Habeo a second time and just repeat the, the part of it that really matters here, that it, it's future. Um, okay. Green, you can maybe catch up tomorrow or something, but the video tomorrow will be checking the homework. So anyway, if you're doing the homework, you're, you're fine. Probably. Um, the reading we did yesterday in the video is not my favorite reading. And it's similar to the homework. So it's almost redundant to watch those videos. All right, number nine. Who can read number? This is the one I don't like. I, well, it's okay. Honestly, this is fine. But I'm not going to pick this one for the quiz. So again, I'm either going to pick uh, uh, four, five, six, seven, or eight, not nine. Um, and uh, I'm going to pick two of them, right? All right, who can read it? Nope. All right, C, Iram, Tuam, Superabis, Te, Superabis. This one's kind of weird. We'll see why. What did you get, uh, Abby? If you overcome your anger, you will overcome yourself. That was perfect. Awesome. So, yeah, we have what uh, is called a condition here. If um, superabus is uh, first, second, or third person, David, superabus. We have superabus twice. First, second, or third person. Second singular. Good. So the subject is I, you, or it. You, um, superabus. What tense is superabus, Avery? Very good. Yeah, it's future. So it's going to be something like, if you will. And then Iram, Tuam. I already knew to skip over those. Maybe y'all wouldn't normally. But Jenna, what case are Iram and Tuam together? They go together. Good. So they're probably the what kind of object, Amanda? Good, the direct object. So it's if you will overcome your anger... Uh, and here's another, this is called a condition when we use if. Little tidbit, guys. Conditions always like, are, are often going to have verbs that are in the future tense, but you actually don't want to translate it like it's in the future tense. Because if you think about it in English, if I say something like, if you eat that pizza, you'll have a stomach ache. We know that I'm talking about eating the pizza in the future, but I don't say, if you will eat that pizza, you will have a stomach ache. No, it's like, you just understood that I'm talking about the future tense when I start with if. We don't actually want to use will. So I'm putting will in parentheses there because you don't actually want to use it. So if you overcome your anger, even though it is future, it's like technically will overcome. But in English, that sounds weird. So just if you overcome your anger, then what case is Tay here, anyone? Because we just had the same verb a second time, but now we have a new what kind of object, Genevieve? Yeah, good. Tay is going to be very good. Tay is going to be direct. Like, so I put it, I made it red or green because it, when we see te or may, they're e either accused of direct object or the ablative object of a prep. For us, usually they've been the direct object, and that's what it is here. You will overcome yourself. So te and may are usually me and you, but if they are the same person as the subject, which in this case is second, then it's actually me, myself, or yourself. I know that's kind of confusing. It's part of why I will not pick this one, but because we wouldn't want to say you will overcome you. That sounds weird. So it's you will overcome yourself. That's called a reflexive verb. Isn't that crazy? Computer gives, uh, they, get, they have reflexive verbs happening in chapter five, way before we had chapter, uh, what, like 16 or whatever? I thought it was like No, it's like 14, 15, or 16 when we're, we're, we'll focus on reflexive pronouns. Uh-huh. Ira, ira, ira is anger and tua is your. So, because I promised I would do this, anytime you want me to write out a dictionary entry, I will. We have era, eri, 
means anger. First declension. And then to us. Tua, to um, me it's an adjective meaning your. Right, it sounds like Genevieve is keeping a log of vocab words she's having trouble with, which is what everyone should be doing, but plenty of people are not for some reason. Any questions, guys? Any questions at all? All right, we got about a minute or so. Y'all can make flashcards in the remaining minutes. Um, yeah, Jeffrey tomorrow. We'll review a little more, and then we'll do a quiz on Friday. All right. Computer kids will also play Jeopardy tomorrow. But maybe not you. Well, you don't. Yeah, right. Okay, you know how to do it. And also the video, you can watch it on like double speed. It's not, it's an okay video, but the reading is not my favorite. So y'all can play Jeopardy tomorrow, and then y'all will also take your quiz on Friday. What? I attack you with a...